Hi, this is Chris Young, and welcome to Good News on Tap for the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. Again this week, our Gospel talks about John the Baptist. Now, throughout all of the Gospel, John really hasn't talked about it all that much. He's mentioned at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, but there are a couple other references to him, but he really doesn't play that big of a role. On the other hand, we've talked about him just about every week throughout Advent, and last week for the baptism of Jesus, and here he is this week again. I think the reason that the fathers of the church who established the common lectionary have put so much emphasis on him is because he's a very important role model. Basically, John was a nobody. And in contrast, Moses was raised as an adopted son of the Pharaoh. And the Old Testament patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were leaders of nations, as were kings David and Solomon. Even the prophets like Isaiah and Elijah, although they weren't necessarily political leaders, they were held in great esteem as men of God and had great power and authority. John wasn't like that. John the Baptist was a weirdo. He lived out in the desert, he wore strange clothes, he ate funny food. His preaching was out of the ordinary as well. While the religious leaders of the day were quick to condemn anyone who didn't follow the letter of the law, John was preaching forgiveness of sin. He was saying that, yes, we've had transgressions, but we need to put those behind us and move forward to reform our lives out of love and respect of God rather than out of fear of his wrath. So in spite of humble beginnings and strange appearance and lifestyle and unusual message, he made a great name for himself. He had a massive following. People were anxious to hear what he had to say. But what was his greatest message? His message was, none of this is about me. It's about that guy over there, Jesus. He's the one you need to be listening to. I know my place. I know my job. My job is to point you to that guy over there named Jesus. That's what I'm all about, pointing you in the right direction. That same sense of ministry, that same sense of purpose, is illustrated by Isaiah in the first reading. Isaiah knows that even in the womb of his mother, he was destined to be a prophet of the Lord, to call people back to God when they'd gone astray. In the psalm this week, the refrain of David is, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And in the very short second reading, Paul simply introduces himself as called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Monday this week we celebrate yet another prophet of the Lord. A modern day prophet who was a visionary like the prophets of the old. Like the prophet Daniel who dreamed great dreams of what the nation of Israel would be like if they turned to God. This week we celebrate the life of of modern-day prophet and dreamer Martin Luther King, Jr., who dreamed what America would be like if we could move beyond racism and embrace all people as our brothers and sisters. King wasn't a king. He wasn't a political leader. He, he never held political office. He wasn't rich. He had no personal power. But like John the Baptist and Isaiah and David and Paul, he used the gift of his charisma and his ability as an orator to point the direction we ought to be going. It wasn't about him. It was about what he was calling us to do. We're all called by our baptism, and by that baptism we're authorized to the roles of priest, prophet, and king. We need to seek God's will for us and see how can we, we can use it to lead people to him. So take some time on MLK Day and throughout this week to listen for the call of God. He has a plan for us, and that plan is not about us. It's about using us to bring others to him so that they too can know the joy of his unconditional love and forgiveness. And that's Good News on Tap for the second Sunday of Ordinary Time.